Hi everyone, welcome to History on Trial. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy. We are looking at the Jacobites and we're looking at the stolen legacy of the Jacobites. And so we are exploring the psychology of identity. And in this particular instance, we've been talking about the Jacobites for a while. We are going to be looking at sketches of the 45. And these are uh, sketches in terms of descriptions, physical descriptions of the individuals who were involved in that particular uprising. And so we're going to be looking at descriptions for 150 individuals uh, who were sent to the plantations in the Americas. And so this would be the uh, East Coast of the United States and also into the Caribbean. And uh, we're going to be looking at those individuals. We're going to be looking at surnames. And so you can get an idea of the surnames that go along with the Jacobites. And you can see if there's any relationship between those surnames and your surnames. Um, and you're also going to be seeing information about their occupations. You're going to see information about their ages. And then you're going to see information related to physical descriptions. And so you're going to see information about hair, skin color, um, physical makeup in terms of stature. Um, and so it's a very informative uh, listing here in terms of this information. One thing that's really noteworthy is this dynamic of splitting up families uh, based upon phenotype. Um, that's pretty obvious here. And so you'll see notations related to individuals being uh, sent to one place based upon uh, their skin color. And then, of course, by extrapolation, you know that individuals were sent to other locations uh, based upon uh, their phenotypes. And the focus here is on challenging uh, those historical revisions uh, that people have been subjected to time and time again, regardless of what your phenotype might happen to be. Uh, you need to keep an open mind in terms of what your ancestral phenotypes might uh, have been and this will uh, definitely assist with that and so I'll give you a broader perspective in terms of who the Jacobites actually were and this coincides with the descriptions of the Jacobites and the Highlanders uh, the people in the Hebrides um, that we've looked at before um, from other literature and if this appears on anything other than Dr. Tracy McCarthy it is stolen and unauthorized let's get rolling Okay, we are going to talk about the Highland Games, but not the Highland Games that most people are used to talking about. Um, this is sort of an identity game. And so what you had in the Highlands, what you had in Scotland was this displacement, this uh, depopulation. You had a sort of genocide going on. You had an ethnic cleansing going on. And then you have depictions, uh, historical depictions that support all of this, sort of this revision in terms of history. And so it creates confusion for individuals, regardless of whether the individuals are considered lighter or darker. Uh, these descendants of the Highlanders uh, they are diverse. The Highlanders were diverse. Uh, those islands, those Scottish Isles, those people were diverse. Um, but those clans, those races hang together based upon those surnames. And so we are going to look at some information that calls into question these depictions that are pretty um, homogeneous. Um, and so the depictions show that there was a mixed multitude in terms of the Highlanders and in terms of the Jacobites. Now, one of the problems is that um, the slavery that took place with these individuals, this indentured servitude, it was often referred to as white slavery. And so it becomes very confusing. And so people have a lot of dissonance trying to figure this whole thing out. Um, but for the most part, common sense is going to tell you uh, what the people probably looked like based upon the uh, treatment of the individuals. And so you have a dynamic with the uh, Highlanders, and you can see here with the Jacobites, um, that those who survived this wretched treatment by the uh, king who took over, um, that those who survived went to Barbados. So they went to the plantations in Barbados. And then further down, you see additional information related to attempts to suppress the Jacobites. Um, and those individuals ended up going to North Carolina and going to Virginia. Um, and 
pretty much mixing in with different populations there, whether you're talking about other colonists or whether you're talking about the indigenous population. And off to the left, you can see additional information uh, related to those transports that came related to the 1715 uh, time frame. And you can see the ships. You can get information about the names of the people that were on the ship. Um, and you shouldn't hesitate to check those things out related to your ancestors. So let's say you get into the 1800s and you there's sort of a drop off. Um, in terms of your ancestry. So you might want to start looking at these things. So you're kind of skipping uh, back a little bit and you might want to start looking at these to see if you see some consistency in terms of surnames um, that might go along with your family name or even four names that go along with your family name. And you might find connections and it might help you to then start going forward again. Um, also with the 45, there were ships that go along with the 45. And here's some discussion here talking about you know, how many people were forced out in terms of this depopulation. And so you have um, information about 10,000 being forced at one time and then 50,000 were estimated to have been sent uh, from the British Isles during the 17th and 18th centuries. And so you can see that this is a sizable number of people and these numbers are probably uh, lower estimates. Um, again, though, you can actually see the actual names of these individuals and so that's very helpful. There is some indication, however, that some people sort of got lost in this whole process. So it may become a little tedious, but this gives you another avenue uh, regardless of what your current phenotype might be. And so you do need to keep an open mind related to who your ancestors may have been. Okay, so we're going to be looking at Jacobite gleanings and this is related to the transportations in 1745. Okay, we are going to be looking at some information related to some transported rebels. Uh, we're going to be looking at the list and description of them. And there's information also in here about their fate. And so we are looking at information related to the ship known as the veteran. And here you can see additional notations about where people ended up. And you can see again, Barbados, Jamaica, and Virginia. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the descriptions of the individuals, these 150 rebels, uh, and you see a notation that 15 were women. Okay, so you can see here, we're going to be looking at some information, again, related to uh, demographics, phenotype. Uh, there's an interesting notation that supports this idea of separating people based upon phenotype. And so you have this information about an individual known as George Hume. He was marked as a black man. And it was determined because of this that he would be best suited to the West Indies. And so again, you have this dynamic of separating family members, of separating people and having them undergo different types of servitude based upon phenotype. Okay, we're going to be looking at an exact list and description of the 150 rebel prisoners that were shipped out of Liverpool on the veteran. And so we're going to be able to see, again, the names, the ages, the professions. You're going to see what county they came from, um, how tall they were, and then also the physical description in addition to the uh, height. And so you see here Robert Adam. He's identified as 18 years old. His profession is a laborer coming out of Sterling County and he's about five uh, feet, one inch. And then you see the description, the physical description. He's described as brown and smooth faced. Uh, then you see William Bell. William Bell is older, 46. He's a weaver. Um, and you see he's described as having black curled hair and that he is strong made. You have Dougal Campbell. 
uh, who's described as a servant and he's 18 years old. You can see these are, you know, some really young people um, who were rebels. And um, you can see the height and you also see that he's described as brown. Um, you also see uh, an Alex who's 17. His profession is a miller. And um, he's described as sort of both black and ruddy and healthy. And here we have additional descriptions. You again, off to the left, you see the surnames and you see the diversity in terms of the surnames and those surnames are pretty common in the Americas. And then you see the descriptions in terms of the occupations of the individuals, the careers. You see everything from weaver to herdsman to carpenter to laborer. Um, and then off to the right, you see the physical descriptions. One thing that's pretty important is that uh, some of the individuals are noted as pock pitted. That means that those individuals had already uh, suffered from smallpox. Um, again, you see this diversity in terms of description. You see uh, people being described as having a brown complexion. You see some with red hair. Um, you see some described as ruddy. Uh, ruddy is often attributed to individuals with lighter skin color. So that reddishness um, that often goes with uh, those individuals. And then you'll uh, also see brown notations, brown complexion, black, uh, dark, swarthy. Um, you might even see uh, swarthiness in terms of skin color. And then you might see red hair with some individuals when you're looking at phenotype. And so, again, this is a pretty uh, nice list. It gives you a better sense uh, versus those pictures that you typically see of what was really going on in terms of the people who were uh, deported and transported into the Americas. And again, you see some more familiar surnames. So you see McPherson and McIntosh and McLeod and Morgan. Um, and you again see these descriptions and you see with Duncan McPherson, identified as thin, pale, and sickly. Okay, so that's a person who is lighter. Um, and then you see right under that, Angus McIntosh, uh, described as black, very strong made. Uh, that goes along with another McIntosh who is described as brown, uh, having a long chin. Um, and then you go down further and you see additional information related to John Murray, for instance, is described as having brown hair and pale. And so again, you see this diversity in terms of uh, this particular group of people. Okay, so here we have another list, uh, and this is 32 through 46. Again, make note of these surnames because these again are common surnames that you would see in America, in the Americas. Um, and so you'll note that uh, off to the right again, you see indications related to skin color, hair color. You see some individuals like Daniel McKee described as having light hair and being fair and well made. And then under that, you'll see things like James Nielsen. And you'll see that individual is described as black, swarthy and slender. And then you see another individual under that with sandy hair. And so you see again that you've got quite a diversity in terms of the people that were coming. But again, this does look different um, in terms of, you know, it's contrasted with what you would typically think about when you think about the Jacobites or what's presented as the Jacobites. And again, you see uh, even more diversity here. Uh, you see variation in terms of light hair, fair face, brown, well-made, swarthy. Um, so you see quite a bit of information. So this is really helpful. And again, this reinforces the idea that people were not known uh, according to these racial markers that we use today. So people had their family surnames and that was the race. And so you'd have the race of the Scots or the race of the Sutherlands, the race of the Thompsons. And so those groups were actual races. And again, off to the right hand side, you can see significant information uh, related to the individuals. One thing that is really noteworthy is the height of the individuals. And so the individuals do tend to be of a shorter stature. Um, and so that is uh, definitely noteworthy. And now you also get to see uh, female names. And so you see Eliza McFarlane described up top. And then you see what might be Elizabeth Robb 
or another Eliza. Eliza appears to be a fairly common name for uh, many of the settlers, colonizers, deported people. Um, and so you'll see that name often related to that group. And also when they intermarried with uh, indigenous people, you'll often see females with the name Eliza. And here you see some additional names. And again, you can stop this and go back and look at it. Um, and you can also look at directly at that resource. Again, you can see the diversity here. Uh, looking over to the right hand side and not just diversity in terms of the way they look, but look at the resources they brought with them in terms of their professions. And so even though these individuals were enslaved, they brought with them skills. And so they were weavers and gardeners and you can see book binders and flax dressers and watchmakers. And so these individuals came over with significant skills. And so you see, uh, again, the way they are described, dark complexion, well made. Uh, sometimes you see with John Troop was identified as dark and sickly. Um, and so you see, again, this variety in terms of uh, the individuals who came over. And so this information is important because when you look at census data, also, you will see that there are professions listed. And so this might be helpful because you might actually see a profession running through the family. So you see a great, great, great grandparent who was a weaver. And then you see sort of that follow through if your surname's Robertson, for instance, and you see that perhaps there were successive generations of Robertsons uh, that were in the weaving profession. And here we see George Hume again, and he's identified as a writer. You see at 132 um, and identified simply as a black man. Um, and so, again, you see this extensive list of individuals. You see the occupations, um, everything from weaver to cook to writer to barber. Um, you also have Taylor. And um, again, on the right hand side, you see the descriptions of the individuals. And here you see additional descriptions of the deported individuals. Again, you see the occupations and you also see the physical descriptions. And here you get to see more information about the females. You can see a common profession revolved around spinning and knitting. Um, and you also get to see descriptions in terms of uh, physical appearance. Uh, you, again, you see a bit of diversity here also. You see individuals described by hair often over to the uh, right hand side there. And so it leaves open uh, questions related to complexion. But then you also see one Effie Cameron uh, described as having black hair and also being swarthy. As we are wrapping this up, you are encouraged to do a little bit more research, a little bit more reading about the Jacobites, particularly about the 1745 uprising. Um, it will help you to better understand where your ancestors may have come from and why it might be difficult to uh, locate them sometimes. And so we have looked at the uh, 1745 uprising. We've looked at the transport of a particular group of people um, on this uh, veteran ship and the description of those individuals. And what's really important about this is that it gives you another idea uh, related to the demographics of certain groups of people coming out of the Scottish Highlands and even the Lowlands. Um, and so that you have a better, uh, well-rounded picture of the individuals and also addressing issues related to historical revision and this dynamic of depopulation and then ethnic cleansing and genocide and changing the identities of people. And this is detrimental regardless of whether you are now classifying yourself as lighter or darker or whether your ancestors uh, were able to enjoy being settlers or colonizers uh, or whether your ancestors were subjected to being in servitude. And so again, this gives you a, a broader picture um, gives you a little bit of nuance to look at and consider and also perhaps open your eyes to the possibilities in terms of who your ancestors may have been. And so it's really helpful to look at all of this information. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.